In their search to discover the presence of microbial life, NASA sends unmanned probes to two of Saturn's moons, Enceladus and Titan. When the rover on Titan loses contact shortly after making an astounding discovery, the world is in shock. Desperate for answers, the world's space agencies work together to send a manned crew on a billion-mile journey across the solar system. But what will they discover when they arrive? Hello everyone, and welcome once again to The Air's Layer. I'm your host, Jonathan Taylor. Today's video, as you probably might have been able to guess from various context clues, is another book review. And the book in question this time is Titan by Helen E. Slater. As far as the books I've reviewed so far go, this is uh, on the longer side, though by far not the longest. And it is another one in a surprisingly long list of books written by teachers that I've, uh, that I've read. Though it, though it is, at least in my active recollection, the first one I've read that is written by a journalist. That, uh, you know, that clash of backgrounds kind of makes sense a little bit when uh, looking at some aspects of the content, but I won't get into that just yet. Before I describe my uh, specific uh, impressions, I want to talk about the general impressions I'm left with after, the, uh, after going through this book. The TLEW for this review is this book is not as smart as its author intended it to be. It does have its, um, uh, you know, it does have its merits, and there is a, a various obvious, there is a very obvious passion uh, that flows into uh, portraying, uh, you know, the science behind the space exploration and the various uh, operational steps necessary to, um, you know, necessary to keep it going. However, those points are somewhat muddled behind, uh, uh, you know, behind a uh, storytelling, uh, behind a storytelling style that is, mm, that does not know how to effectively, uh, shift its focus around in such a way as to, uh, present the, uh, strengths of this, uh, uh of this kind of narrative. Nevertheless, if, uh, you're, if you're ever curious about the, uh, uh, genre of realistic or hard, uh, science fiction, then I think it's safe to say that this book is a pretty good proof of concept for how that genre is generally supposed to work. So if you're looking for that, um, I can, you know, I can't. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to say anything of, against uh, you know, finding and uh, reading this book. And now that I'm done with the general information, it's time I delve it into some uh, specifics. The book is divided into uh, four parts, each of which covers its uh, own segment uh, of the plot. The uh, uh, the first of these segments is also the only one that is told from a, uh, a singular POV, and it describes the uh, mission that it, the mission that the uh, first half of the synopsis describes with the uh, unmanned probes. Um, more precisely, it describes how that uh, uh, you know how that came to be, what the uh, um, uh, what the backgrounds are, and <clears throat> and what the uh, uh, and what's that uh, astounding discovery uh, actually is. In a sense, uh, putting together the uh, background information for the in, you know for the entire rest of this uh, book, I would almost call it a prologue. Only covers about one sixth of the book, so you know make it that what you wish. The uh, second part uh, covers the actual. Uh, you know the actual process of putting a uh, of uh, putting a uh, mission together, starting with the uh, starting with the uh, uh, technical aspect of the um, of the operation, uh, figuring out uh, what kind of spacecraft they would uh, you know they would have to build to send a uh, to send a crew to one of Saturn's moons, and then uh, and then describing the operation of uh, uh, of actually putting the thing together. Uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, there's also the there's also the matter of uh, uh, and there's also the matter of find of finding and training the uh, appropriate crew, which again also gets uh, uh, quite a bit of attention within the, uh, within this uh, uh, within this segment of the book. The uh, third section, which is the shortest in terms of the in terms of how many chapters are uh, in it, uh, describes the actual. Uh, you know the actual journey that crew goes on once they leave Earth, and the fourth and final part describes what is uh, what was supposed to be the intended uh, culmination 
uh, of the trip. The storytelling overall is quite simple, quite solid, with a uh, you know with an um, uh, with an easy to follow thread of a logical and uh, plausible events leading from uh, leading from one point to the next. There are some there are some twists and turns uh, within the narrative, but nothing that really makes the but really nothing that makes uh, that particular aspect of it uh, the uh, driving force. It is ver it is very much still driven by the uh, you know by how by how the characters uh, respond and react to the various uh, struggles and challenges that are uh, presented to them. <clears throat> of the uh, and of these four parts, uh, it is fair to say that the uh, first one is actually the one that is um, um, that is uh, that is overall the best. Uh, primarily because it has a primarily because it is told from a uh, singular uh, POV, and because of its uh, use of the singular POV, it is uh, it is more it is more effective at uh, imparting the uh, journey of uh, you know, the journey of uh, discovery and of uh, uh, and of industry. And, and of industry and of the end of describing the processes that are necessary in order to carry out uh, space exploration or or at least that are that are currently or within a contemporary setting uh, most effective at uh, carrying out uh, space exploration other uh, other parts of the book while they delve deeper into these uh, while, they delve, while they delve deeper into these aspects and it is and these aspects very much are the uh, focal point of the uh, of the book um, are unfortunately somewhat uh, muddled because of the uh, because of what I think because of what I would like as I think is uh, editorializing from the uh, uh, you know from the author herself where she tries to give a little bit uh, uh, you know a little bit um, more background information than is uh, strictly necessary. <clears throat> I think uh, I think the intention behind that was uh, was perhaps to create a little bit of a <clears throat> uh, to create a little bit of a narrative ambiguity and have that uh, fuel the uh, narrative tension that the uh, you know that the characters would be uh, confronted with. The problem is that uh, her problem, however, with that uh, uh, with that approach is that uh, even though she goes uh, that even though she uh, maybe maybe talks a little bit. Uh, the, even though her narrative isn't entirely uh, streamlined, she still doesn't have the. Um, she still doesn't have the. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know if uh, I don't know if, if ability, skill, or imagination is the is the right thing to say here, but um, or may, or maybe it's just finesse. But for but for whatever reason, she is she does not present a broader context that would be necessary in order to make. Uh, narrative ambiguity really, uh, you know, really seem like a, uh, uh, you know, to where narrative ambiguity really actually uh, works for the sake of the story. Like, <clears throat> I could, like, for example, when uh, when selecting the when selecting from among the candidates for the uh, for the among the crew candidates, it becomes quite easy to figure out which of the candidates will end up being selected. When only a subset of them actually get, you know, backstories and and uh, uh, personality descriptions uh, or characterizations, and even then, and even when, uh, and when, uh, no, not even when, when simply when, uh, Helen does uh, character work. Well, it's pretty hit or miss, I have to say, or at least it is hit or, hit or miss in the context of uh, this story. Because with the uh, uh, you know with the uh, most important characters that are uh, uh, that are presented within this narrative, uh, I think it is I think it is fair to say that the thing that really that uh, stands out the most about them is their um, is their background and their um, and their their knowledge their scientific background and their um, expertise, so to speak. That's what you know. That's what really allows them to. That that's that's what gives them their uh, importance within the uh, you know within the larger mission, and that is what the story itself is also quite capable of 
uh, effectively, effectively highlighting and presenting. <clears throat> Because when it comes to other aspects of their, when it comes to other aspects of character building, I'm afraid, uh, I'm afraid Helen is not as, uh, is not is not as skilled or as graceful as she perhaps uh, imagines herself being. Because most characters really only receive two or three personality traits, and even for these personality traits, uh, she really has she really has to go in a little, she really has to go into uh, stereotypes in order to give them some level of uh, definition. And when looking at their backgrounds, most of them have some have just pretty much plain idealized middle class backgrounds that don't none, none of which really allow them to uh, stand out. Their interactions are interesting, though. I will uh, I will give her that. But still, this uh, this story isn't really uh, about um, about the characters. It is about the uh, process necessary to uh, you know necessary to uh, make. Uh, space exploration a reality. It is about a, and it is that uh, pragmatic, realistic approach towards, um, uh, you know, towards space travel and uh, space missions that really makes the, uh, you know, that I think really helps the book uh, shine. Helen quite obviously has a, uh, has a passion for the topic and for the manners in which uh, expertise and insight um, from a variety of different fields contribute towards making that a, um, a reality. And it is through that <clears throat> and, and, and it is through that uh, uh, perspective, through the, uh, you know, through the interest that she exhibits uh, with this field that, um, uh, you know, that the actual happenings of the book are very much, um, are, are very much highlighted and given their uh, narrative meaning. That is true up until the last quarter, more more or less, I'll say, where the more fantastical aspects of the genre, uh, you know, start to uh, start to pile up. At which point, the book goes through a tonal clash that it does not, you know, that it, it does not choose to resolve uh, at all, leaving with more questions than it even, uh, you know, that it even dares to answer. Also, as an engineer, I. Uh, when you know, when reading through some of the, uh, when reading through some of the aspects of the more uh, pragmatic, when some reading through some of the more pragmatic facets of space exploration, there were some points where I went, wait, why don't you try uh, X, Y, or Z? Yet none of the characters mentions X, Y, or Z. But then again, that could just be a nitpick. Nothing really, uh, and not then that isn't necessarily uh, Helen's fault. Overall. Um, I think this book has a uh, strong premise, and the um, and the execution it uh, and, and the execution uh, with which that uh, premise is followed up on is uh, is uh, generally strong and competent. However, uh, uh, the author's ambition doesn't really match her ability. My final rating for Titan is a three out of five. And that was my review. Thank you for your attention. If you've uh, enjoyed it, well then please like the video, maybe even share it wherever you think other people will also like the video. If you have anything to add, either to the book itself or to my review of it, that's what the comment section is for. And if you want to see when my next video gets released, well then uh, please subscribe. And ideally also ring the bell or do whatever else YouTube will ask of you in order to uh, keep you notified. Uh, my books, the first of my own Heir to the Empire series, The Next Generation and Path Not Taken, are available at, uh, uh, you know, at uh, various places under their respective master links in the description down below, right past my social media links, which I also suggest you check out should you choose to. Additionally, you have the option of supporting me on Patreon, where depending on the level at which you pledge, you will receive various perks, as I think you, wish you would already be familiar with the concept. Um... <clears throat> Uh, aside from aside from everything I just said, I also have a, a second channel where I talk about whatever crosses my mind that isn't related to books or literature, mainly re you know mainly revolving around um, other forms of media. If, however, you want to hear more about my thoughts on uh, books or literature, then I suggest you stay on this channel and go through my extensive backlog of book reviews, writing advice, and lore videos. If none of those appeal to you, then I suggest you go ahead and do whatever you want with the rest of your day because. It is your day after all. 
Until next time, I am Jonathan Taylor, and this has been The Heir's Lair.